Guys, that is just because I run a blog for teachers and there's certain things that they like to see. Okay. So a lot of you guys mentioned Syria. Question, can anybody go back to that map right there and point to Syria? I want you to be 95% sure that you're correct. Touch it on the map. Anybody? You gotta touch it. Anybody? Or the region, roughly, that it's in. AJ, you think you know? Oh, why are you pointing that? Little gas? All right, quick time out, guys. Self control is something that I want you to practice. All right, I'm asking you this with 100% seriousness who can go back there and touch that? I'm not joking, and I don't think not knowing stuff is, is funny or anything like that. So, um, no, I'm just really wondering if anyone has noticed or, or knows the rough area of Syria. Does anyone in here know? It's usually a geography buff in every room at least. Dylan, now's not the right time for that. Okay, well let me show you. Because Syria could become a very big deal for United States history. Syria, right here, right by Israel, right by Lebanon. Right smack in the Middle East. Did you guys get one yet over there? All right, so, what in the world is the big deal? Why would the United States of America be thinking of attacking Syria, which, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but the United States is right here, okay? Come on, Johnny. The United States is right here. Oh, yeah, there we go. United States is right here. Just need some new batteries. Syria, all the way over here. Not exactly neighbors. Why in the world are we thinking of going over there? Oh. What are we thinking to do? Tyler. Oh. Eyes on Tyler. They put a threat on us, perhaps? Austin? Yeah, there's, a, there's a revolution happening there right now. They are bombing their own people. But that happens all the time. Realistically. Well, they're bombing their own people who are rebelling. I mean, the British bombed us, attacked us, attacked American colonists. They're their own people, technically, but they're rising up against them. The, th the same thing's happening in Syria right now. The people are rising up against the government. The government is bombing the people. But that happens all the time. The U.S. doesn't get involved every time. Why are we talking about it now? Cody? Chemical weapons. Chemical weapons. The question for this article of the week is simply, what in the world is the big deal about a chemical weapon? I mean, you die either way. If I shoot mustard gas at a group of people, or if I shoot a missile at a group of people, they die. So why is it that the world for some reason, or the United States at least, thinks it's necessary since chemical weapons were used to now go in there? This is going to cost American money. This could cost American lives. This is when America is still trying to get out of Afghan Afghanistan and it's just recently gotten out of Iraq. Why in the world are we thinking of going back over to the Middle East just because chemical weapons were used. That is the question that this article of the week seeks to answer. And with articles of the week, guess how often you get them? Go ahead, raise your hand. How often do you get an article of the week? Every week, you got it. Corey, go ahead and relocate yourself. Every week, you're gonna get one each Monday. You're gonna get about 15 minutes in class um, where we'll talk about it a little bit. I'll give you some time to start it. It then goes home with you. You bring it back on Friday. 
On Friday, we may have a debate or discussion about the topic of the article of the week. For example, this Friday, we may debate, should the U.S. attack Syria based on what you read, which would be an awesome debate. And then the next Monday, we do another one. The purpose of the article of the week is because I want you guys, and Ms. Ahmed wants you guys, to just have background knowledge about the world, okay? We don't want you to have to think back to 9-11, although I do appreciate the answer. We don't want you to have to think back to 9-11, all right? So we want you to just be a little more aware of what's happening. Basically because in the U.S. we get to vote for our leaders and stuff, so if we don't know what's happening, um, well, bad stuff could happen. Plus, it's going to make you a stronger reader, too. So here's what I expect with each article of the week. I want to focus in this time on one close reading task that I want you to be able to do, and that is annotating. Go ahead and write annotate. Spell it correctly. Annotate just simply means you see the keyword note in there, to make notes on a text. Raise your hand if you've done this in a class before, just writing directly on a text. Okay, college students do this every single freaking day. I do this every single freaking day. It's not because the teacher's making me, it's just because it's, it's a simple, sophisticated way to sort of slow yourself down and fully understand what you're reading. But what do we write in these annotations? What should be on there? For example, can I just write, on Tuesday, Secretary of State John Kerry compared Syrian President Bashar al-Assad to Adolf Hitler and Saddam Hussein for using chemical weapons. Should I just write, wow? Is that an annotation that's helping me to learn this text? Uh, Corey. Uh, yeah, so one thing that you might do is you might circle uh, words that you're having difficulty or that you just don't know, right? For example, if you didn't know the word convulsions, you might circle that. You might jump on your computer, go to dictionary.com and actually look that bad boy up and write down what a convulsion is, all right? Simple, quick, open it up, click into Google, define convulsions, and it's going to tell you convulsions are like shaking around. That's the technical definition. Shaking around uncontrollably or something like that. All right, guys, simply circling and defining unfamiliar words is a key way to grow your vocabulary. I want every single one of you to do this when you read an article of the week for words that you legit don't know. In some articles, you may not have any. What else could I do besides just wow? Caitlin. Unaligned important facts. Sure, yeah. The world decided after World War I and the horrors of gas in the trenches and the loss of an entire generation of young people in Europe that we would never again allow gas to be used in warfare. He told Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Who is he here? I'm getting a little confused right here. Who is he? Tyler? Um, John Kerry. Yeah, nice job. It's John Kerry, right? Sometimes I'm simply going to connect things to, to, to help myself, right? I got a little confused right there on who he is. Wait, who are we talking about again? So I just make that simple connection. All right, maybe, Caitlin, I think World War I is a big reason. So I might simply write this was a large reason for banning weapons or, or something. I don't know. Basically, guys, what I'm looking for here in your close reading is mature thinking. All right, that can be questions. That can be summaries. I literally have a history book from college where every single paragraph I wrote next to it what the paragraph was about because the book was so freaking hard. 
every single paragraph in that book. I should find that book if I didn't burn it. Every paragraph in that book next to it, it summarizes in my own words what the paragraph is about. So you can do that sometimes. You need to do that sometimes. But maturity is the key, right? I'm not looking for wow. I'm not looking for LOL. I'm not looking for OMG. I'm not looking for smiley face, frowny face, okay? I'm not looking for jokes, all right? There's a kid last year who used to every single article of the week write something about a guillotine because he got obsessed with guillotines during our French Revolution unit. And he used to say, well, Bashar al-Assad, he needs to go on the guillotine, <laughs> LOL, all right? Kid used to really do that. That's not what I'm looking for, okay? All right, and I could not, for the life of me, beat that out of him either. All right, he just—he probably still doing it right now um, for Miss Beaton. I'm not gonna tell you who it is, but it's not good. Okay, uh, so I'm looking for mature thinking, notes in the margins. That's the gist of what I'm looking for. What I want to have you guys do is go ahead and jump into this now. When you're done, you'll find instructions for what you need to do. All right. When I grade these on Friday, I'm going to be way more worried about what I just taught you than I am going to be about this. But you do need to do this, all right? You do need to write a one-page reflection, stapled to the back at the end. But I'm going to be way more closely looking at the notes, the maturity of thinking, than I am that attached reflection. We'll talk about the reflection in later weeks and then I'll get a little more persnickety on you there. You're gonna have about 15 minutes to get started on this. Probably when you take this home, you'll have maybe 10 more minutes to do.